Hi, welcome back. So in this video, or the last video in this section, I'm going to be talking about working with remote branches. So right now we've only been working with one branch, which is the master branch. And usually this is how it would go for most of your projects. But if you're working on something for a client, let's say a website, usually if they ask you to make revisions or changes, or let's just say something's wrong, there's a typical process that you would follow to fix this error. Now usually what happens is you would create a new branch, fix the error, then merge it with the master branch, and when you're done, delete that branch. Now since we're working with GitHub, it's a little bit more complex, but I'm going to be going through with this today. So I created this new JavaScript file. You don't need to know JavaScript to know this, don't worry about it, you don't, if you don't know any programming, uh, just forget it. You don't need to know any programming, I'm just going to show you the kind of process flow that's going on. So I'm just going to open up this file, preview it in GitHub. You can see it's a function that doubles an input number. So just if you don't, again, if you don't know programming, just think of this as just some random code. Now let's just say this is made for a client and the client says something's wrong with this function. It's not working. And I'm sure everyone can see the error right here. So what we're going to do is pull this into our local repository. We're going to create a new branch, fix it push it back into our GitHub repository, and then we're going to delete that branch. So the branch is going to be used to fix the error in a way. So usually this is how it would work for most of your projects. You would create branches uh, for fixing errors or, you know, making revisions. And then when you're done, you would merge it and finish off with that. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is pull everything into my local repository. So I'm just going to use git pull to get everything and pull it into my local repository. There we go. So a few changes were made. You can see that func.js was added. I'm going to go ahead and open that with my text editor. Uh, you don't need uh, you don't need a text editor like this. Like I have, you can use Notepad, Notepad++. Uh, this is just some. Uh, it's an IDE, so it helps with highlighting uh, whenever you're doing programming projects. So don't worry about that. But you can see here that we can clearly see the error. It's supposed to double and it's tripling it because it's timesing it by three. So what we're going to do is go create a new branch and then we're going to work on uh, fixing this error. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go and create a new branch, git checkout dash b and then the name of the branch. In this case, it would be err1. I'm just going to call it that for our first error or o1, depending on what you want to call it. So I'm going to do that and now we're on the new branch. So let's go ahead and fix this up. So what I want to do here is just fix up the error. So I'm going to change this to two, save the file. And now if we check the status, we can see that it has been modified. So now I'm going to add a, add everything to the staging area, commit it, say fixed error. There we go. There we go. So now next thing I, I want to do right now, that's just the final thing is to merge the branches. So I'm going to go ahead and merge that now. So I'm going to switch to my master branch, get checkout master. And hopefully you remember how to merge branches from the previous section. So now I'm going to go get merge and then the name of the branch, A E R R O one error of one. So there we go. You can see that it has been merged now. So let's go ahead and check our log and see what's going on. So you can see right here that uh, we have a bunch of new things here. When we pulled it, it added this doubling function, which is where our origin slash master branch is. And then up here, you have fixed error. So we have master and ERR01. So this is kind of how it would work. The branch, a new branch has been created off of the doubling function. And off of that, just somewhere in the other branch, we fixed the error and then merged it back together. So now what we want to do is delete the error one branch, but we're going to do it after pushing it to our GitHub repository, just to show you how you can delete remote branches. Now you can totally do this from here. You can go uh, remove the branch from your terminal and then push it. But I just want to show you how you can delete remote branches just so you know and uh, get a feel for working with remote uh, repositories and all sorts of things like that from your uh, terminal. So what I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, I'm a little bit stuck here in, in my git log. So I'm just going to close off the terminal uh, really quickly. 
go back to my uh, my path. So I'm going to go uh, find one of my softwares. Where is it? My path. There it is. Copy that. CD into there. Sorry, this is uh, taking a while. So I'm going to CD into git, git remote. And there we go. So now what I want to do is I have the branches. I have everything set up. So I'm going to go ahead and push it to um, push it to our repository. There we go. So the git and GitHub course. And just a little something, you do have to do this every time. Uh, you want to push something just for security because if something didn't work or, you know, if someone was trying to breach you, they could easily push some malicious code onto your GitHub repository. So that's why it asks for authentication. So there we go. We pushed it. Let's go ahead and check our thing right here. So you can see here we have nine commits and we have one branch. Let's go ahead and check what's going out. You can see we have the default branch master updated three minutes ago by video lab. What's going on? So pretty much what's going on here is that we didn't actually push the e error 01 branch onto our GitHub repository because what's going on is we just typed git push and hopefully you noticed that because um, what I'm trying to prove here is that when you're, you can't just type git push and expect everything to go, what you need to do is push each individual branch. And that's what this whole video is focusing on, is trying to make it aware that each branch is kind of separate and you need to deal with them uh, separately. So what you would do is git push origin and then ERR01. And then you would enter your uh, username. And your password just like you normally would with the master branch except this time we're pushing our error branch so there we go so now you said to this here right here uh, star new branch error 01 to error 01 there we go so let's go ahead and refresh our git and github course and now you can see we have two branches there we go so we have our err01 and we have our master branch so there we go. Now we have both of our branches and it's all fixed up. And why don't we go ahead and check out our commit right there. You can see that's where we fix the error. So there we go. Going to go to the branches. And so you can see there's uh, all sorts of different things here. Uh, but pretty much what's going on is we merged the branch, we created the error branch, we fixed it, we merged it, and now it's all finished. So that's why when we actually go to check fixed error, you might have noticed that it says master. It's because we merged it together. So now that that's done, we don't really need the error branch anymore since it's been fixed. So why don't we go ahead and remove the branch? This is actually very easy to do and you don't need to pull it and push it and do all of that. All you need to do is type out one simple command. So we're gonna go over to your terminal and once you're there, you're going to type git push origin dash dash delete. And then you would type the name of the branch. So in this case, it would be ERR01. So you can see that this is uh, quite useful because you don't need to pull and then push. It just pushes a delete protocol. There we go. So then, of course, you need to enter your username because it's still a push. There we go. So it's just going like that. There we go. So it deleted the error 01 branch. So let's go ahead and refresh now and hopefully it should say one branch. Oh, whoops. Yeah, you see there it's a 404 error because this branch doesn't exist. So if we go back actually uh, right here and refresh the main page, it's going to show one branch now. So there we go. That's deleting and working with remote branches. So I hope you understood that. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but once you get used to it, uh, it becomes quite easy, especially if you're working for clients, making branches is kind of the norm because if something goes wrong and you mess up everything, you can just switch back to the master branch and wipe out that branch. So uh, it doesn't interact or interfere with anything. So there we go. We're pretty much done with our um, our stuff here. We're pretty much done with branches in on GitHub and in remote repositories. Again, I would recommend that you go and after we've learned all of these commands, it's kind of hard to keep them straight 
in your head. It was actually hard for me to remember this, but what you can do uh, is go check out the Git cheat sheet. It was in the Git basic section on the article. All you have to do, just go open that up. Uh, it has all of the useful commands, the ones that you most use, because let's be honest, it's really hard to remember and keep all these commands straight in your head unless you use them 24 seven. So I'd recommend you go uh, check it out, you know, try and see uh, if you're forgetting something and yeah, that's pretty much it because you don't really need to memorize these commands. It's not a necessity uh, because Google's always one click away. So yeah, that's it for Git and remote Git. So now we're going to move on to using source tree and a GUI. Uh, so this is optional. You don't have to take it, but if you don't like using the terminal and if you prefer to use something a little easier, so, you know, a little bit more user friendly, uh, go ahead, look at that section. But if you don't, if you don't like source tree or GUIs and you just want to stick to your terminal, go ahead and move on to the goodbye section. You pretty much finished the course. Congratulations. But if you want to stick around, go ahead. I'd highly recommend you do. Uh, it gives you an alternative way of looking at things in Git and GitHub. All right, let's move on.